Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at blending and in particular, we're going to be looking at blending using the radio filter to create the image that you see on screen just now. Now there's a couple of other things we're going to be looking at as well as masking and locking and unlocking masks and what you can do to adjust them as well. So I would consider this video perfect for beginners and if you're looking just to enhance your skills, perhaps there's something in the video that you don't already know. I'd also like to point out that these three images, which will be available for download, are created with AI. Now, a quick question for you, so please put this in the description. If you know I'm running out of space on Dropbox, so if you know of any other online receptacles where I can store images and share them with you for videos like this, please put that down in the comments below. So without further ado, let's dive right in to this week's tutorial. First thing we're going to do is drag in the first image, which is this one here. And as you can see, it's AI generated out. Now I'm going to leave it that size. Next thing I'm going to do is bring in the second image, which is that one. And what we're going to do with that one, as you see up here in the contextual taskbar, I can flip this and I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to click OK. And then I am going to move that to the side, just ever so slightly. We're just placing everything in just now. And finally, I am going to bring in this one here. And again, I'm going to flip that to the side. So I'm just going to click that there and flip it horizontally. And click Done or hit Return or click OK. Now I'm going to move that one over to the side and that one there, just to the edge of the frame at the moment. Plus, I'm also going to turn these two off. And that's simply so that we have all the images that we are going to be using loaded into the document. Next thing I'm going to do is turn off the background. And you will notice here that each of these images are smart objects. Well, I don't need them as smart objects in this case. So I'm going to hold down Shift and click the bottom one, so that the, all three are highlighted. Right click in any one of them, and rasterize layers. With the bottom one selected, and the background turned off, I am going to use the lasso tool, and I'm just simply going to draw in where I want it to fill with a new AI generated generative fill. And just click that and click Generate. And it will run through that for us. Now it's given us three options here. I quite like that one. Quite like that one. So I'm going to leave it in the first one. And I'm going to blend that directly into this next one to save space. Just in case I have to save. So we're going to select that layer. Control or Command and E and blend it down. Going to do the same with the opposite side, and this time I'm just going to draw in here. So again, we have three options, and I'm just going to choose the one that I'll like the best, and I'll just go for that one, and again, blend that down, Control and Command and E. Now the next thing we're going to do, this is a very simple exercise in what we're going to perform here, and what we're going to do is enable this layer here. Now, I want that to blend into this one, so I'm going to show you a couple of things that can happen here, and hopefully from this you will be able to pick up certain techniques that you can use in your own images. With this, I'm going to create a new mask, and this is a reveal all mask. We are going to edit this one slightly differently. Yes, we will be using brushes, but I want this one to blend differently. So I'm going to go straight in to the gradient tool and if you hold down on the paint bucket tool just at the wee arrow at the edge there you'll see you have the option for the gradient tool. Now I'm going to select the gradient tool. In the options panel at the top we have gradient or we have classic gradient. I'm going to work with the gradient and 
I'm not going to work with the linear. I'm going to work with the radial gradient for this. The mode is normal, opacity is normal, dither is on, and method is smooth. And I am simply going to drag out like so. And then I'm going to move it across slightly, just to about there. And I may make it slightly bigger, perhaps to about there. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to add another one. So this is just simple techniques just to allow you to blend more subtly. Now, I could do this with the brush quite easily, and you normally have to finish it off with the brush for this one, but it's just to let you see how this affects your image. I could take it over there, and that would blend out some of that into the background. I'm going to just play around with this very subtly and perhaps add another one in there just to get a subtle blend. So if, as you can see, I've used quite a few. I could have simply enabled this with the brush. What I'm going to do now is I'm now going to select a brush and I'm going to make it black and I'm choosing the first brush in the general brushes which is the soft round, increasing the brush size with the square brackets on my keyboard and just simply clicking, I'm not painting for this, but I'm just simply clicking with the areas that I want to fade out. I'm going to leave it at that. As you can see, I could have painted that with a brush. This is just to introduce you to a different technique using the gradient tool. So we're going to repeat the same process on the opposite side. And I'm going to leave it at that. Now, for me, that doesn't quite work. Although I'm going at the angle there, it can work as well. What I want to show you with the masks is, if I move this image, the mask moves with it. Do you see that? And I'm just going to go Control and Z or Command and Z and put it back. If I choose the link in between the mask and the actual image itself, I can move any part of it. So you see that I can drag that back, I can drag it forward, Command and Z or Control and Z to put it back in place. I was moving the mask there because the white box is around the mask. If I want to move the image and the mask remains where it is, I can do that. What I can also do, I'm always resetting this for this example by Control or Command and Z. What I can also do with this though, is I can go Control or Command and T and scale it up. Now, I, I quite like the position it's in, so I'm going to just hold down Alt while I'm scaling and do that and then drag it down. And for me, that is a better visual connection. Right, I'm just going to take that back up slightly. So you'll notice that there's a line going through like that eye there. So perhaps I want it up there. I'm just going to leave it about there. Quite happy with that. Perhaps I want to get rid of that line. I'm going to link it back up by clicking in between the mask and the image. Go into the mask, choose B for brush, and just take some of that away. Now that all looks okay for what we are trying to do. I now need more space within my image. So what I can do now is I can choose the crop tool, and I do want this 16 by 9. If I click clear up here, it gives me ratio. I can choose any size that I want now. I want 16 by 9. And I want 16 by 9 to go equally all the way around. If I start moving this, it pulls it down from that corner, linking it to that corner. Command or Control and Z. But if I hold down Alt and pull from the bottom or the top or any edge, it allows that to happen. So it scales up from the middle or scales down from the middle. So I'm going to go around about there, just so that I can see every image. Yep, quite happy with that. I can now see where I am working. 
Now, we're not going to fill that in because if I do that, it looks like that at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this layer. Control or Command and J. And then on the background layer, Control T, which is free transform. And again, holding down Alt, I'm going to this thing. I'll just pull from the top just so that you can see it working. I'm going to do that. Plain and simple going to do that and just so that you can see it working from the edges as well I'm still holding down alt so it just depends how you want to work this I am going to take it to around about there click OK so that you can see what I'm about to do next I am going to turn off that layer with the background layer turned off also and then I am going to choose the rectangular marquee And take edge to edge. So I'm going down to the corners of each one. So it's roughly about there. If I go into any one of these layers and hit delete. So if you watch this layer here. If I hit delete or backspace. It disappears. So what I want to do is invert the selection that I've just made. So I've simply got to select inverse. Now if I click delete here. It takes off that, and you can notice at the top of that's away. I click delete here. It takes off some of that image, if there is any going beyond, and then the same with that image. So we now have a clean edge to this creation. I'm going to turn on the back of that, deselect. So that's now what the image looks like, and it just depends on how you want to work your images and how you're blending just to see what you want from this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want all of these up onto a new layer on their own, as in it's all three images stitched together. So what you do is you turn off the layer that you don't want visible, and then go to the top layer and press Shift, Control, Alt and E. And you notice if I turn the three of these off, it's combined them into one layer. Now, I want to add something else to this. So I'm going to turn on that background layer that I had. And holding down control, I'm going to click inside here. Not on the layer, but inside here. And you'll notice that the icon, there is now a selection marquee. That happens, doesn't matter what shape is in here. If I go over here onto a mask, do you see the selection marquee? And I click that mask. Do you see that it's created a selection marquee based on the shape? I'm going to deselect that. So what we're going to do is we are going to go in here, click holding down, while well, holding down control, it'll be command on a mark, and then that is that area is selected. I'm going to create a new layer so that it's here, and we're going to go edit stroke. And I'm going to make it white because white works best with this. I'm going to click OK. Seven pixels is OK as well. And you can choose whether you put it in the inside. It means it will create the seven pixels in here. The center means three and a half and three and a half. And outside, it means the seven pixels will be in the outside. I am just simply going to leave it in the center for this. It doesn't make any difference because of what we're about to do now though. In certain cases it would. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to simply go Control D, which is deselect. Or you can go up to select and then deselect Control and D. It's entirely up to you. So we now have, if we just zoom that in, Control and zero. We now have a border on that image, which separates it from the image we originally made in the background. Now the other thing that I can do with this is I can go Control or Command and J, copy it up, Control T, which is free transform, hold down Alt, grab one of the middle handles and drag out and we now have a double border. Just to about see there and then hit return. And if I zoom that, but I'll make that full screen, which is F on your keyboard. 
So now that you can see we've created two borders in here, and if I want to see how that looks against a white background, just right click on the black and choose custom. And this will be, in my case, white. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully if you didn't already know this technique in Photoshop that it adds to your skill base of what you already know. Thanks again for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next video.